Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this really pretty pansy using my watercolours for Dina Tollefson's Growing Garden Art Challenge. And I'll leave a link in the card above to Dina's channel if you want to go and find out more, see what other artists have created, or maybe even find out how you can take part yourself next time. I'm also going to share with you a really easy art hack for how you can quickly create some realistic veins on petals or leaves using this embossing tool. But don't worry if you don't have one of these, as I'm also going to give you some ideas for other things you can use instead that work just as well and will most likely be items you'll have lying around at home. So make sure you watch till the end and I hope you enjoy the video. All the materials I'll be using will be listed in the description box, along with a reference photo from Pixabay if you want to go and check that out. So without further ado, let's get started. I began by drawing an outline sketch for my pansies on my watercolour paper using a regular HB pencil. I'm using Cold Press Saunders Waterford watercolour paper today, which is 100% cotton and £140. You can use whatever paper you like, but I would recommend using proper watercolour paper for this one if you have it and want to use the embossing technique, as it'll hold up better. If you're unsure though, check first on a scrap piece of paper to avoid any upset later on. So next I tested out which colours I wanted to use in my painting by swatching them out on the side here. Pansies come in a huge variety of colours, but I really love the dark purple ones with the yellow centres, so I chose lemon yellow, mauve and quinacridone purple from my schmincke set of watercolours with just a bit of burnt sienna to add to the lemon yellow in the flower's centre. Now I'm ready to start painting and I begin with the petal at the top on the left hand side here as I'm right handed. I like to paint one petal at a time and I'm going to use the wet in wet technique for this first layer so pre-wet the surface of the paper first with clean water before adding paint. I'm using the quinacridone purple to start with and adding it to the wet paper using my size 8 silver black velvet brush. The watercolour bleeds across the area of paper that I've wet but doesn't spread out across the other petals so it gives me a bit more control. Whilst it's wet though I also add in more concentrated pigment to the darker areas of the petal and start to suggest some of the veins in the petals by painting some of the quinacridone purple in the direction of the veins. This is just the first layer though so I'm not going for any detail but I just wanted to get a feel for it. Whilst the paper is damp I also add in some of the darker mauve to the centre of the petal as well and let the colours mix together on the surface of the paper. I repeat this process on my next petal and because the first petal is still wet I don't paint the one directly next to it to avoid any paint or water creating unwanted blooms. So I leave a petal in between and continue with the same method I used before. Each petal is different though so I try not to make them all the same and use my reference photo as a guide. With pansies you often find that the two petals at the back are different colours or shades to the three at the front and even though this wasn't so much the case with the pansies in my reference photo I tried to add a bit of variety to keep things interesting. And once this first layer of petals were complete and my paper had completely dried I could then go back and paint in the other petals. Now in my reference photo there is a white edge to a lot of the petals so I had to remember this when pre-wetting my paper and leave a small gap free of water to try and preserve the white of the paper here. It doesn't matter too much mind as alternatively you can add these white areas in at the end using white gouache for example or if you have it you could even mask this area out first using masking fluid. So do whatever works best for you. Once I painted in all the petals and my paper had completely dried, I switched over to a small size one round brush to add in the details to the centre of the pansies. I used concentrated mauve for this and applied it onto dry paper using short sweeping brush strokes. 
I tried to fan them out from the centre of each flower to the edge, again using my reference photo as a guide to help make my petals look more realistic. But speaking of realistic, I think I did overuse the mauve a bit on the first layer of the petals, as they are quite different to the reference photo, but that's the way it goes sometimes, so I didn't let it worry me. Next, it was time to paint in the centre of the pansies using the lemon yellow, and again I applied this to dry paper. Purple and yellow are opposite or complementary colours, which when mixed together make a muddy kind of brown, so it's really important to bear this in mind if you want to avoid it and keep your colours fresh and vibrant. So make sure the paper is dry when applying complementary colours next to each other. This wasn't something I had to worry about though when adding in a bit of burnt sienna, so I dropped in a tiny amount to each of the pansies before the lemon yellow had completely dried. Ok, so with all that done and dry, now I can start to paint in the second layer of watercolour and show you the fun and easy way I added some realistic veins to the petals using my embossing tool. If you haven't got an embossing tool then don't worry because you can achieve the same effortless effect using items that you'll probably have at home. All you need is something pointy to indent the paper with without tearing or damaging it. So you could use the other end of a pointy paintbrush, the edge of a plastic store card or even a hair grip for example. So have a look around and see what you can use. But whether you're using an embossing tool or a hair grip, it's worth practicing this technique out first before jumping straight onto your painting, just to get a feel for the amount of pressure you need to apply and so on. So the first thing you need to do is to re-wet your petal or leaf and apply another wash of colour. I'm adding some quinacridone purple and darkening up the areas in shadow with more mauve. Now whilst this is still wet, you can use your tool to indent the paper. You need to have an idea of where you want the veins to go, as there's no going back or undoing this once you've done it. But see how the wet paint settles into the grooves I've made to really easily add in that extra detail. It's so quick too, and saves loads of time painting them in at the end with a fine brush. So I repeated this step on the other petals where I could see the veins visible on my reference photo. I noticed that the two larger petals at the top of each pansy had more visible veins on them than the smaller three petals in the front, so I mainly used this technique on those, as I felt that doing it on every petal might look a bit over the top. It's personal preference though, so do whatever feels right for you. As well as adding in the vein detail, I also used this second layer of watercolour to build up the colours and values on each petal. So here I'm adding in more of that quinacridone purple, and applying it more like a glaze onto the dry paper to change the overall colour up a bit. Turns out, as much as I didn't let it worry me, I still wanted to add back in a few more of those pinky tones. Next, I decided to add further interest by mixing in a bit of ultramarine blue to the edge of the white area within each petal. And I did this using my size 1 brush again, painting onto dry paper. I'd also used a tiny bit of this blue around the yellow parts at the very centre of each pansy, which added more of a greeny colour in the shadow areas here. Now one thing I really love about watercolour is how you can continue to layer and glaze over different colours, and so before I added my finishing touches, I used a light wash of magenta over the top of some of the petals, which helped to bring back a bit more variety and vibrancy to my painting. And the good thing about using the embossing method to create the veins in the petals is that the effect is not lost by doing this, as there's no chance of lifting out the paint with the addition of more water. I 
I was happy with the colours at this point, but decided to balance out the detailed petals by adding in a few leaves using the wet and wet technique again and my larger size 8 brush. I mixed some sap green with some of the leftover mauve on my palette to create a more muted green tone and just dropped in some very loose leaves. I also used the embossing tool again just to mark in some of the veins. And now I'm switching to a size 1 script liner brush and some opaque white watercolour to neaten up some of the white edges to the petals. This one is by Snellia and I'm using it fairly neat here and have added just enough water on my brush to help the watercolour flow on the paper. If you're curious about this opaque white watercolour, I have got a video here on my channel where I talk about it in more detail and I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. I really enjoyed painting another botanical piece today with these watercolour pansies and I really hope you enjoyed the video and maybe feel inspired to try out the embossing technique for yourself in one of your own paintings. Please don't forget to go and give some love and support to the other artists who have taken part in this growing garden art challenge by checking out Dina Tollefson's channel and give this video a like, leave a comment and subscribe if you're not already. I really appreciate all your support and love hearing from you, so take care, have a good weekend, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!